Hi, I'm Valerie Bertinelli, and today we're making turkey, pesto, and veggie calzones. We're using leftover Thanksgiving turkey. They are loaded with hearty veggies, a creamy, herby pesto sauce, and wrapped up in store-bought pizza dough, so they come together really quickly. They're perfect for those post-Thanksgiving meals where you want a satisfying dinner with minimal effort. If you're cooking along with me today, make sure that your oven is preheated to 450 degrees. Line two rimmed baking sheets with parchment paper. Bring your pizza dough to room temp and cut your leftover turkey into bite-sized pieces. You ready? Let's get started. All right, what we're gonna do first is get our mushrooms and our broccoli sauteing. I'm gonna take the stems out of the mushroom caps but we're not gonna throw the stems away. We're also going to chop those up and saute the mushrooms and saute the broccoli together. And that's gonna be part of our filling. That's where the veggies come in. So when you wanna take out the stems to the mushrooms, it, they pretty much come out pretty easily. Just give it a little wiggle until it releases. There you go. And there you have it. We're gonna slice the mushrooms up and dice up the stems. I'm going to turn the heat on to our pan. Get that heated up with some oil. That way, by the time I'm done and you're done slicing and dicing, the pan will be nice and hot. So just get in there and dice up the stems. And what we're looking for, for the stems, you just want to really dice them up. We're going to slice the mushrooms because I want to be able to see those in our calzone filling. And we are sauteing the mushrooms and the broccoli together first. We're going to give them a little bit of flavor, but they are also going to cook in the calzone in the oven. Okay, let's get the stems in and start slicing up the mushrooms. And then just slice into your mushrooms. Not too thick because we do want them to fit in the calzone, but we're making nice big calzones. We're going to use this one pound of dough and just make two calzones with it. So they're going to be a nice big size and we can slice them up and share them. When I'm making after Thanksgiving meals, I try to use some veggies that we didn't necessarily have for Thanksgiving just to kind of bring in a new flavor. Because if you're anything like me during Thanksgiving, you kind of eat the same thing day after day because it tastes so darn good. And then you're ready for a little bit of a new flavor. And that's where the broccoli and the mushrooms come in. I never find myself serving mushrooms or broccoli on Thanksgiving. Okay, let's give these a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And I know I'm salting the mushrooms before they've cooked down, but I really want to release a lot of the water, and this is going to help them do that. Usually, when you're sauteing mushrooms and you really want them to get a beautiful, deep color and you want to get them nice and caramelized, you don't add the salt until at the end. But we're doing it a little bit early this time. And then a little bit of pepper. And every mushroom to hit the heat while I chop up the broccoli into bite-sized pieces. And these mushrooms are big, but mushrooms really, really reduce in size as they cook down. There we go. Onto our broccoli. So again, we want bite-sized pieces. I'm going to start by taking some of these florets off and getting rid of the stem. I mean, if you like the stem, put that in there too. I actually do like the stem a lot of the time, but I really want to see the florets more than anything. And these should be, there you go. Those are nice bite-sized pieces. And you want about two cups by the time you're done. 
because again, broccoli will cook down as well. Oh, this smells so good already. Mushrooms sauteing. Mm. How you doing with the chopping? You chopping along with me? These guys are nice and little, so we're gonna keep them. This guy needs a little help. Oop, this needs to be stirred. I can smell it. Okay, now all the broccoli goes in. And we just wanna cook the broccoli until it turns a beautiful bright green because it is gonna cook for 25 minutes in the oven in the calzone. Let's get a little salt and pepper on these guys. There you go, see the difference in the bright green? Blanching will give you the same effect this beautiful color and par cooking the broccoli, but we don't want to add any water. Okay, this is looking lovely. So I'm gonna turn the heat off and let this finish cooking while the heat cools down and then put this into a bowl and let it really cool down before we start adding our cheeses for the stuffing. So once the heat is off and this is cooled down and you put it in your bowl, come on back and see me. But in the meantime, press pause. I'll see you soon. Hi, welcome back. Okay, your filling is probably cool by now because you're back. So we're gonna add our cheeses and our pesto and of course our leftover Thanksgiving turkey. So I'm gonna add some ricotta and that goes straight in. Just building our filling now. And cheese. We have a little mozzarella. It melts so beautifully. We're gonna add a little bit of pesto in there. This is gonna give you a lot of flavor. And then all your leftover turkey meat. I want you to use the breast meat. I want you to use the thigh meat the leg meat, whatever you got left over, put that in. But I do encourage you to use both. I do love the dark meat. It's got way more flavor. And then just mix that all together. It's so easy to get store-bought pizza dough now. You can get almost any kind. I do encourage you to get the dough that is in the ball for this because we want to make two big ones. Or if you get the dough that's in the pop-out container, it's already rolled out for you. It's going to be a little bit more challenging to separate into two, and that's kind of a big calzone. You could probably still do it, though. Just probably need a little less stuffing. So there is pesto in here, which is gonna add a lot of flavor. There we go. Let's just add a little bit of salt and pepper. The turkey probably already has some salt and some pepper on it. And it roasted, so it's got a lot of flavor. And then a little bit of pepper. Plus we already did salt and pepper, the broccoli and the mushrooms. All right, our filling is done. We're gonna separate this into two parts because we're also gonna separate the ball into two. Just cut it right down the middle. There we go, okay. 
Now grab your sheet pans that you are going to put your dough on. Grab the first one, get that nearby, and then grab your pizza dough. If it's room temp, it's a little bit easier to manipulate. I'm gonna pull it out and cut it in half. And I'll put the other half back on here. Now, it's not a ball anymore, so just don't manipulate it too much. Just get it into a ball and then just start spreading it out. You don't need any flour. Just want to get it to about 13 inches. And usually, once you get it to a certain size, gravity will start to help you pull it apart. So just keep working it until it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. If it's a little on the cooler side, it will bounce back. So what you want to do is try and stretch it out and really get those ends where all the thick part is and really get in there and sink your fingers into it and stretch that and then let the weight pull it. See how it's just stretching down? And then you're thinning it out with your fingers all along the edges. And if you have any friends that are in the pizza biz, they could probably toss it and stretch it out for you. Get it down. Here, this one's a little bit thick, so we're gonna play with this guy a little bit on this side. Just stretch it out. It's just about playing with your food for a little bit. Keep moving it around until it gets to about a nice size. Whoop. And look, if this happens, just get in there with some thicker parts and cover it up. This dough really manipulates well. So you can cover those holes really easily. If I was just making pizza, I would leave it because I like when it gets nice and thin and crispy. All right, let's fill her up. Just want to fill one side you can get it all on there and then push it off to the side and you want a nice mound in there leaving about an inch on the edges and then you're going to pull the side over And then make sure that you grab the bottom and really push down so this calzone closes and stays closed under that high heat. If you need to, go back around again and just roll it so you know it's really closed tightly. Just get your fingers in there. Then what you want to do is give it some space to breathe. Grab a serrated knife. You don't want it to puff up and break. So you want some air to release. So you're going to get in there and give it just little cuts, just little, just like that. And we want a nice golden brown crust. So we're going to take a little bit of olive oil, get it in a bowl, 
Our broccoli was in this bowl. Don't dirty another bowl. Grab a brush. And just brush it right on. One is done. Now you're going to do that all over again. Let gravity do its thing. Then you just want to get around those edges like you did before and thin those out. Stretch it ever so gently. And there we go. And then just keep stretching it. And the parchment will help it stick so you can really stretch it out. Bounces back. Show them who's boss. Stop bouncing back. You will become a calzone. And then the rest of the stuffing. Just want to bring it a little bit over and then stuff that down. And then you really got to make sure these edges are tucked in. Again, we're going to give it and then a little bit of olive oil right on top. Your oven should be nicely preheated. These guys are going to go in for 25 minutes. They're going to be a beautiful golden brown and the inside is going to be cheesy and yummy. So I'll see you guys in 25 minutes. They smell amazing. <laughs> they look so good too. Okay, I'm going to just take it off the parchment. I'm gonna cut into this so I can show you guys. So what you can do to serve it, you can cut it into pieces like a pizza. Cut right into it. more slices, but I want to oh, show you that filling. Oh, it's hot. Doesn't that look luscious? I'll cut open another piece. I'll just cut them. I'll cut them all the way down. And this is how you would serve it. I mean, you can get a dipping sauce with some pizza sauce or anything, but they're really good just like this. So let me show you all the different veggies. You can see the broccoli and the mushrooms and the creamy cheese and the turkey. I'm going in. Mm. 
I, I don't know what to say. This is so amazing. The turkey is so tender. It's not dry like your turkey can be sometimes on Thanksgiving. It is so tender. The veggies are nice and still crispy. You can see them, you can taste them, and it's creamy and it's cheesy and it's so darn good. I hope you guys enjoyed cooking with me. I certainly do love cooking with you. If you like this recipe, go ahead and bookmark it so you can make it again. And I hope I see you again. Enjoy. <laughs>